If you want to learn the basics of Figma in a faster and efficient way, this video is for you. In fact, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Figma so that by the end of the video, you can start creating your very own designs from scratch. Now, Figma is one of the best design tools out there and it's becoming increasingly popular, especially by employers who are looking for designers that can use and efficiently create design projects in this software. Now, I also want to remind you that I recently launched an entire Figma course, so feel free to check it out. But now without further ado, let's jump right into the video. In order to start using Figma, you have to go on figma.com and as you can see, we have this option right here, which is try Figma for free. Now at this point, simply click on it and you can either create an account with Google or you can simply enter an email and a password. And then once you're in, you're going to be redirected to this. Now, regardless if you're using the web browser or if you decided to download the standalone app, Figma is going to work exactly the same. So as you can see, over here, we have uh, our recent projects and on uh, the left, uh, you're going to find uh, all of the teams uh, and uh, related projects. On the top, uh, you can also see the tabs which are currently open. And uh, if we click uh, on this uh, plus icon right here, or even on the new design file right here, you can see how Figma is now creating a very new document. Now, the very first thing that we want to do is to rename this document uh, to something which uh, is meaningful to, to us. And uh, also you can change uh, the background by simply clicking over here and uh, selecting uh, pretty much uh, any background uh, that uh, you desire. Now, on the very top left, uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, a few set of tools. Here is the main uh, menu. And uh, if we go and uh, create a frame, we can actually select one of these frames right here. So either phone, tablet, desktop, or even some of these alternatives. In this case, we're going to create a desktop frame, which is 1440 pixels of width, which we can also resize if we want, for example, 1920, we can do it like that. And uh, if you use command plus the scroll wheel, you can see how we can easily move in and zoom in and out uh, in Figma. You can also use command minus or command plus in order to zoom in and out uh, in increments. And now you might be wondering, uh, okay, zooming in is all fine, but how do I actually move around? And moving around in Figma is extremely easy. Simply use uh, the space bar and as you hold it, you can see that the cursor changes, right? So it's now a hand. And the moment that I click and drag with the left mouse button, I can actually move around in Figma. So using this combination of command and the scroll wheel and the space bar to move around, it's just going to make moving around the design file very easy. Now let's go ahead and let's create a rectangle inside of this frame. We're going to create a small um, website. So as we created this rectangle right here, you can see that we have the fill option on this right side. And I can easily just make it completely white. And if I go ahead and click on the plus under the effects, you can see that now I have a drop shadow. Now the drop shadow as any other element in Figma can be uh, adjusted according to what are our needs. So in this case, we're going to make it with a blur of 25 and uh, we're going to essentially change uh, the color just a little bit. And once we're done, we simply click on the X and we are good to go. Now at this point, what uh, I want to do is to change the background color of uh, this website, but I still want the header to be white. Now, <clears throat> one way to do it is to actually create another rectangle, but a better practice uh, is to actually select the entire frame. And uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to select our color. And as you can see, we can change uh, the color of this frame and uh, the background related to it uh, directly in uh, um, one single movement. 
Now at this point, uh, I want to add some uh, text. So I'm going to go on the text tool and uh, let's uh, write here the headline. So as you can see, if I zoom in, the headline is very small. Now, a very easy and quick way to basically um, make it bigger is to use the scale tool, which is also with the uh, keyboard shortcut K. So if you click on scale, you can see that now the cursor changes and as I drag one of the corners of this text, I can make it bigger in pretty much no time. Now the problem with scaling text <clears throat> with, with the scale tool is that most of the times you're going to have these uh, numbers which are with the dot and then you know the numeric value. So I'm just going to delete the, uh, the related value and I can also change them directly from here. I can make it a hundred pixels and I can also center it and uh, also, this is really interesting. I can use the auto width feature, which is a feature which uh, I personally use all the time in Figma. And essentially it's uh, saying to Figma, hey, I only want uh, the borders to be at the very end of the text instead of having extra borders. Now, I also wanted to make sure that this text uh, is not only vertically aligned, but also horizontally aligned. So it's very easy. Simply click on the align horizontal centers and uh, you can also vertically center it. And uh, you have now a text which is uh, aligned uh, compared to the frame. Now you can also quickly duplicate this frame uh, or actually this text. And uh, the way that I can do it is by using command C and command V. As you can see now in the layers panel under the frame, we have a duplicate of this uh, headline, but an even better way to do it uh, and more practical in this way, in this sense, uh, is by using shift and the option key. Now, as you can see, the moment that I, that I select the option key, the cursor changes. I see two cursors. And this is indicating me that I can create a duplicate of this text by simply dragging and uh, dropping it uh, anywhere that you want in the frame. It's so really useful and I'm going to make this text uh, smaller. I'm using shift and the arrow keys in order to move by increments of 10. And uh, I can simply uh, write some text. So this is the very new beginning. And uh, this is how you can uh, essentially duplicate elements in a very fast way in Figma. Now at this point, I want to, to add uh, some uh, images to the whole composition. And uh, a very easy way to do it is by using uh, plugins. Now, <clears throat> if you click uh, on uh, the plugins and then on browse plugins in community, you can see that uh, we can uh, find a lot of different, uh, um, not only plugins, but also UI kits, icons, and uh, widgets, and much, much more. So I'm going to go under Unsplash, write it up here. Then I'm going to select plugins, since uh, if I don't do that, it's basically going to show everything uh, under the sun for that specific search query. Now you want to install the plugin which is called Unsplash and uh, it's uh, in my case I already have it installed but you should, you're going to see it like that and uh, you simply click on install wait for the installation which is very fast indeed and then once it's installed simply go back and uh, go under the Figma icon under plugins search for Unsplash and it's going to take a moment to basically load and I'm going to search for minimal. Now at this point, what I can do is uh, I can create a rectangle and that, as you can see, you can still work in Figma and uh, do anything that, that you need, uh, um, even while the plugin is uh, working on top of it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this rectangle. I'm going to bring it here 
we're simply dragging and dropping it uh, with the left mouse button so it's really easy way to just move it around or you can use option and command that's the up arrow or down arrow in, in combination with option alt command and uh, you can essentially move it around uh, in uh, the layers panel now at this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this uh, image right here and of course you can search for any type of images so feel free to use your creativity and uh, uh, use uh, any image that you want really now we have our very own uh, image now at this point since uh, you can you can see that we have this uh, two layers of fills we're going to remove the previous one and if we unhide it you can see it right here below now i'm going to hide it again and uh, I'm going to simply remove it by clicking on the minus. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it uh, in a way that works better. So I'm going to go over here, crop. And as you can see, this uh, option appears. And I can simply drag it up just a little bit. I can use the shift key in order to maintain the direction vertically. So that is perfect. And I'm going to... Yeah, just, just try and uh, find uh, a composition which works well. I can also change uh, the values of this image so I can make it more, I can add uh, the more exposure, for example, or more contrast. I can also adjust the saturation and even things like the temperatures, the tint, the highlights, and also the shadows. So you have a mini editor right here. You can also rotate it in uh, any direction that you want. And once you're done, simply click on the, the uh, close icon and you're pretty much set. Now, what we want to do though is to have an effect where I can still see the blue background below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to either remove uh, a bit uh, or lower a bit of the opacity. So maybe around 30 or 20. So I still see the image below, but I'm not uh, really going to be able to see it fully. Or another thing that you can do is that you can pump it up all the way to 100 and use uh, one of uh, the layer um, options, such as these ones, color burn, maybe overlay, or even soft light could work well. So you can mix and match and you can, of course, also lower the opacity as well. So you can really create uh, all sorts of different uh, um, effects uh, and uh, uh, different elements. I'm going to end up by rounding uh, the corner radius. And uh, we're going to add also a little bit of a, of a drop shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of y-axis and just lower it down just a little bit and we have our basic design now this is uh, just the start in my youtube channel i have uh, hundreds of figma tutorials so if you want uh, to bring your figma designs to the next level feel free to check it out and now without further ado we're going to continue with the next videos